Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for the very warm welcome. And most importantly, thank you all for joining us today on the Digital Playground. Um, as previously stated, I'm Catherine, and I am calling in today from the great state of Texas, uh, specifically Dallas, Texas. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I believe that this is usually the part where the speaker tries to convince you about how excited they are <laughs> to have everyone staring at them through a screen. Um, but I'm not one to lie to you. So for the sake of emotional authenticity, I'm going to let you in on the fact that I'm actually feeling pretty vulnerable right now to be sharing not only my own story, but our team's journey creating empathy. But it is my hope that through our mutual sharing and discussion that you all would not only get to know me better, but you will also get to know our product as well as maybe even share your story and your hopes for creating safe digital spaces. Now, as you probably can tell from my title slide, today's time on the Digital Playground will encourage you to use your imagination, to reimagine something that we've been socially conditioned to just accept. In fact, to kick things off, Rebecca, Paul, I would love to take all of us on a journey through our own imagination, just to kind of help set the scene for today's presentation. So let's imagine that all of us on this call are about to jump on a transporter and we transport back to the 1980s. Good times if you were born during, a, during that big movie. Everyone is currently raving about the VHS or the video home system. And we've just had the release of the Nintendo Game Boy. But They've all heard rumors about this thing called social media and how it's going to completely change how we communicate in the digital age. Their question to us is, what is social media? So my question to you is, let's take a few seconds and ask yourself, how would you explain social media to someone who has never experience it. This can be a literal definition. It can be conceptual. It can be based purely on how you feel about it. But the overall point is to focus on how you would explain social media to someone who has never experienced it. If you care to share, please come off mute, drop it in the chat. I'd love to hear your thoughts on using your imagination to think about things outside of the box. But for the purposes of this, trans uh, for this presentation, I would like for you to remind yourself that this exact version of the imagination that you have to use to answer this question is the part of our imaginations that our founding team at Empathy is using to recreate the human experience on social media. So for the next 20 minutes or so, I'd love to share the story behind two very unlikely founders who set out on a crazy journey to address the downsides of social media by overhauling it with the human emotion of empathy while prioritizing their users' mental health. And as a special treat, I am so excited to share with you our official product demo. So who am I and how did I get here? Because if my parents were on this call, they would tell you that when they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I did not tell them I want to build an app. So in fact, for the past decade, my career has been in mental health, where I soon discovered that my life's mission is to influence humanity to treat people like people. And throughout my career, I've had the absolute honor to work with populations in mental health, such as active duty military and veterans, 
pregnant and postpartum mothers, teens, and people living with co-occurring mental illness and substance abuse, as well as recently working with adolescents who are living with eating disorders. And where logic will tell you that these populations have very little in common, I found myself regularly discussing their relationship with social media, whether it be the effect that consuming the content had on their recovery or social media's urge to cause us to compare our everyday ordinary lives to the carefully curated highlight reels of our followers. And at the time, the only solution that I could offer them was to take what I call the great social media cleanse, which you get off of it, you feel better, you go back on it, and the vicious cycle just repeats. It was during that time that I was going through that cycle that I met our founder and CEO, who is the visionary behind Empathy. And he gets asked all the time, how in the world did you originally envision the concept of empathy? And if he were here today, he would tell you that beautiful heartwarming story that hooked me in my first conversation with him. Short answer is he set out to create the product that he needed when he was going through that pivotal life stage between high school and college graduation, where we find ourselves asking that question, what am I going to do next? Empathy's vision actually came to him when he was at the peak of his design career, doing work for huge brands like Nike, Jordan Brand, and Timson. But at that time, he was simultaneously struggling to choose between purpose versus passion for his life. And this is when he desperately searched for empathy and understanding of his confusion online, but instead only found judgment. It was then that he told himself it had to be a better way, which led us to our research that continued to reveal that 64% of Gen Zers were experiencing anxiety, 56% were experiencing depression, and 52% were experiencing an overall dissatisfaction with their lives while engaging with social media platforms. The sad part about it is this problem doesn't just impact Gen Zers. In fact, this month, we saw a release made by the former product manager Meta releasing a statement that says she believes that tens of thousands of people will die if social media isn't overhauled. Which brings me to that why now question. Why do we believe that there is no better time than now for a product like Empathy? Because not only is there currently an urgent demand for mental health solutions within the U.S., but what we found is Gen Zers and millennials alike first turned towards social media in their search for solutions on platforms that were never meant to provide support. Which brings us to Empathy's version of the solution a micro focus on emotional authenticity online, a social therapy app where people share and connect through their authentic emotions. And now we'd love to share our official product demo to help you reimagine the human experience on social media. Please meet Empathy. Social media is fake, and empathy is about to make it more real. And these publications think so too. So how do we do it? Through empathy, of course. Empathy will do daily check-ins to see if you are okay. Your mood will be transparent for everyone to see. You are probably thinking, nope. That's why you won't be alone. You will be able to see everyone's moods as well. It's an authentic experience because you will get to see it's okay to be human. Now, let's find a story to watch. For privacy purposes, all stories will be muted. All right, 
let's check out Kelsey's story. There are no likes, views, or filters on empathy. It's like expressing yourself freely without the added social pressure or the need to be perfect. Now let's see the conversation. Oh, hi. On empathy, we're old school. There's no following or adding people. You make connections simply by talking to one another, just like in real life. It's just that simple. Now let me show you our favorite feature. It's called the emotional ecosystem, where you can find a story for whatever mood you're in, but it can do much more. You can also see humans being human and see their moods change in real time. It's another way of empathy showing you it's okay to be okay, and it's okay to not be okay. It's all part of the human experience. And one more thing, when you share stories or moods on empathy, empathy will keep note of it and offer support when needed. And this is just a glimpse of how empathy makes social media more real. Oh yeah, empathy has a one strike system. Troll one time on our platform, you are gone. Bye. Now it is my hope that you not only have a better understanding of our product, but that I can use the second half of this presentation to sort of read your mind and guide you through our inspiration for, this, for the features and the benefits of empathy through the breakdown of about four questions, the first one on your screen now, that we have asked ourselves throughout our journey. I love this question. Can we even reduce social pressures on social media? And here's how our team thought about it. Our approach is to first start by removing the numbers-driven focus of likes, views, and followers, and instead encourage our users to connect and curate their content based on their mood. This focus not only allows our users to get a glimpse into their own emotions and identify them, but it also allows them to see how their content makes their connections feel. So empathy will check in on you up to three times a day, asking you a question, simply, how are you feeling? This will allow our users to follow their emotional journey through their personal dashboard or what we like to call their mood journal. This also will allow empathy to provide any necessary mental health support. And then there's my favorite feature, the emotional ecosystem, which is a real time glimpse into the human experience where you can see people's emotions changing in real time. And on empathy, I like to say we're old school. You create connections through communication, just like in real life. So you can say goodbye to the click of a button, allowing you to have access to someone's life who you've never actually had a conversation with. Additionally, we promote community support and privacy through the use of our one strike system that you saw in our demo. Continuing that conversation on privacy, what happens on empathy stays on empathy, meaning that screen sharing or sharing content outside of empathy is disabled. I like to think of this as a similar practice to products like Netflix, where the it's only content allowed to be viewed on Netflix. And another mental health focus of empathies is our use of the color wheel of emotions and the ability for users to choose to consume and curate stories for every mood. So how do we do it? What makes empathy any different from its competitors? Well, empathy takes the social of social network and adds it with the solutions of mental health tech and combines that with entertainment and emotional authenticity. A very likely question that you may be asking yourself is, Will people share their authentic emotions online? 
Short answer for that is yes. Not only do people love the idea of empathy, but within the last official year, or empathy's organic traction has landed us on 40 plus major outlets such as Forbes, TechCrunch, and Fox. In fact, we are currently undergoing what I like to call our scrappy beta within our community Facebook group where we've been running for the past almost four weeks and we have over 700 people participating. 71% of those members are active and we see about a 15% growth weekly and a 170% increase in engagement. I've also included some customer personas here where you can see that people are indeed sharing their authentic experiences. But not only that, but through the power of communication, they are receiving the human emotion of empathy in return for their authenticity. And then there's this question. <laughs> Can social media even be ethical? And where we're currently sitting, this is highly debatable, but here's how empathy plans to go about it. Instead of driving volatile customer acquisition campaigns and then placing the burden on users to prioritize their own online safety, we plan to build our business on ethics, including first, Co-creation. We believe that it is unethical to build a product for a community of people without putting their voices and insights at the head of the table. Empathy will also utilize AI-based content moderation for digital trust and safety. We will also utilize ethical algorithms that ensure fairness, transparency, and privacy. And that wouldn't be me if I didn't plug our small but mighty team of advisors and early adopters that, as you can see, have, pro have professional backgrounds in design and mental health and social media and digital trust and minor safety. But if you ask Catherine, our two youth advisors play the most important role in product development at Empathy. And to wrap it all up, I would like to answer this question. Where are we and where are we headed? Well, as Rebecca mentioned early on, we're currently finishing our time with Techstar Detroit. And as I stated earlier, we are about midway through our eight week beta test um, of Empathy's concept while simultaneously building our MVP with the support of Tech Town Detroit and the Idea Accelerator. Then of course, every founder's favorite part, which is fundraising. And then shortly we'll see our official launch of our product. And I'll bring this slide up again, just to allow for my shameless plug of our data currently in progress. If you find yourself wanting to join in on the fun, please take the next few moments to scan that QR, QR code at the bottom of your screen. And other than that, Rebecca and Paul, I would love to say that it has been an absolute honor to join in on the digital playground. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to share and spread empathy with all of you. I cannot wait to answer your questions, gain creative inspiration, get answers, and refine results. Thank you guys for your time.